Mr. Patel is a 53-year-old male who works as a physiotherapist at a local hospital. Unfortunately, Mr. Patel has had to isolate at home after contracting COVID-19. Although it's been almost two weeks since he tested positive and is beginning to feel a lot better, he's noticed he's unable to smell his morning coffee. He organises a telephone consultation with his GP who confirms this is likely to be post-viral anosmia as a result of his recent COVID infection. My name's Aisha and welcome to the first of our Cranial Nerves Anatomy series. In the next five minutes we'll cover everything you need to know about the olfactory nerve, its course and its function. We'll then return back to the case and work out what's happened to Mr Patel. Remember, we've done the reading so you don't have to. The olfactory nerve is the first cranial nerve and is purely sensory, so is referred to as a special visceral afferent. Special because it's involved with our sense of smell, visceral because it provides sensory information to visceral organs such as the nose, and afferent because it's a sensory nerve. The olfactory nerve's function is of course to facilitate our sense of smell. If we take a look at the image on the left, which illustrates the nasal cavity, the olfactory nerves emerge from the olfactory epithelium and travel upwards to penetrate the cribriform plate. These fibres then enter the olfactory bulb where they synapse to form secondary neurons and continue as olfactory tracts. As we've covered in the last tutorial, the brainstem is comprised of three main components, the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. Although the olfactory nerve seems as though it originates from the brainstem, it's important to remember that the first two cranial nerves do not come off the brainstem. Instead, the olfactory nerve originates from the olfactory epithelium present within the nasal cavity. We'll cover these in more detail later on. So far, we know the olfactory nerve is formed from the assembly of axons originating from olfactory receptors which pass into the olfactory bulb. The foramen which allows the olfactory nerves to enter the cranium is located within the anterior cranial fossa. If we take a closer look at the anterior cranial fossa, this is located on the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Cribriform translates to sieve in Latin, and olfactory nerve axons pass through the tiny holes of the cribriform plate to enter into the cranial cavity. Let's now take a look at the course of the olfactory nerve. Olfactory receptors are present within the olfactory epithelium. This is known as pseudostratified columnar epithelium and is responsible for detecting changes in smell. From here, sensory neurons converge their axons to form olfactory nerves, and we call the bundle of olfactory nerves the phyla olfactoria. These olfactory nerves are referred to as primary sensory neurons. Olfactory nerves then penetrate the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and synapse onto second order neurons called mitral cells. The location of these olfactory nerve synapses are called olfactory glomeruli, which are present within the olfactory bulb. This results in many second-order neurons to be generated, which eventually form olfactory tracts. These olfactory tracts then travel to the inferior surface of the frontal lobe and divide into two divisions, called lateral and medial striae. Lateral striae carry axons to the primary olfactory cortex within the uncus of the temporal lobe. Medial striae, however, carry axons to meet the olfactory bulb on the opposite side. Nerve fibres also pass to other areas of the brain, such as the hypothalamus, amygdala and parts of the limbic system which is involved in the memory of emotional and behavioural senses. Now, let's go back to Mr Patel who developed anosmia after contracting COVID-19. Generally, the olfactory nerve can be tested during a cranial nerve examination. This involves asking the patient if they've noticed any changes in their sense of smell. This is then followed by asking the patient to close their eyes and identify certain odours such as menthol, peppermint or even coffee. In Mr Patel's case, it's become well known that loss of smell is a common symptom of COVID-19 and anosmia can persist even after active infection. Whilst the exact mechanism is still unclear, it is thought that COVID-19 related anosmia may arise from temporary loss of function of supporting cells within the olfactory epithelium. Injury to part of the nasal epithelium due to infection can persist for weeks or even months after clearance of the virus. This will continue until those damaged regions of the nasal epithelium regenerate. Although this can have significant impacts on quality of life, most patients recover without needing any treatment. Other causes of anosmia can also include traumatic brain injury, tumours, Parkinson's disease or even Alzheimer's. And there we go, we've covered the olfactory nerve's fibre type, its course, 
the foramen in which she enters the cranium and have even learnt a little bit about post viral anosmia. If you enjoyed this session, remember to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our next tutorial where we'll cover everything you need to know about the optic nerve. Thank you for listening and have a great day.